Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Cynthia, welcome back. Um, so if you guys haven't seen the last video with Cynthia, we went over um, how she created her monologue book. So you guys should definitely go check out the video. Today, Cynthia is going to, yes, that book right there. Today, Cynthia and I are going to work on a monologue based off, an, off of an experience that I had with um, somebody that didn't necessarily um, agree with the way I was pronouncing my name and they were trying to give me advice in my career. So we're going to do that. And then we have something really excited. We have a monologue competition that we're going to announce and it includes some really great prizes that Cynthia and I are going to gift you. So wait for that at the end of the video. You ready to get started? <laughs> yes but I don't think I've ever written a monologue myself, which is really exciting. Oh, yes. Well, um, they're super easy to write. The best thing about monologues, uh, they don't really have to have like that beginning, middle, and end structure mm -hmm. because we're so used to like them being like in the middle of a play when a character like has this long speech. Right. And so the audience is used to sitting for like an hour or so and having like that context. Um, so really this monologue can go any type of way and it'll be good. I'm excited. Oh, and by the way, you guys, so for the monologue competition, it is going to be two of Cynthia's previously written monologues. And then you can also choose to perform the monologue that we write today. Yeah, so very interactive. And I think this should be cool. Yeah, so talk about your experience. Um, as I mentioned before, when actors are trying to step into the writing world or writers in general, it's always best to write about things that you know and personally have gone through. So mm -hmm. tell us what happened. So a few years ago, I was in a casting office and I was in the waiting room and somebody asked me for my name and I said, Belgica Rodriguez, because I needed to uh, check in. Somebody approached me and I didn't know who they were and they said, oh, I've, I've seen your name around a, a lot of times and we talked a little bit and right before I headed into audition, they said, oh, I see you're very set in pronouncing it like that. And I immediately knew it was, you know, I'm pronouncing it in Spanish, but that's how I've always pronounced it. And that was a little weird. So then I went into the audition room, I was started to go into the audition room. And as I went in, they said, hey, if you want to continue this conversation after just head into my office. And I was like, okay, so I auditioned. And the funny thing was that that audition was for a speaking Spanish role. So I actually had to do my audition in Spanish. And then I was done with my audition and I went to their office and in their office, they essentially advised me to think about pronouncing my name in a more American way to be more accessible and make people in the room more comfortable because they said some people are weird about it. They might feel inferior to you because they can't pronounce your name. And something that really stuck with me was something along the lines of, we don't need to make the white people in the room comfortable, but you want to be more accessible. And to me, that just felt made me uncomfortable that I would have to say it in these ways that they shared with me that were possibilities like Belgica Rodriguez or Bell Rodriguez. Yeah, they just advised me that I would have a more lucrative career if I was more accessible with my name. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. Hearing that story, it's very cringy, especially like being a Black woman, I can completely understand where you're coming from, where you constantly have to make yourself uncomfortable just to like please and make other people comfortable. Well, actually, before I continue, how did you walk away? Did you take advice at heart or what was your decision? It was really cool to get to get somebody that had so much power pay attention to me, you know, because a lot of the time when you go in casting directors or whoever is there, the client, they brush you off because they're in a hurry. We were in their office for maybe 25, 30 minutes. I can't remember. So the fact that they took so much time and they wanted to like teach me something. And I know a lot of people do microaggressions without even knowing it, without thinking like how much harm they're doing. I wasn't willing to be uncomfortable in order for a few people to be a little more comfortable. Well, um, I'm very glad to hear that. That means you held your integrity. Microaggressions, um, they're, they're very subtle. And in, in most cases, they have to do with preconceived um, prejudice against someone because of like their racial and ethnic makeup. Hearing this story, it just makes me think, yeah, that casting director did take the time to talk to you. And it was about um, essentially, they were talking about marketing, but then it's very important to realize that the marketing that we have today is based off of Eurocentric ideals and um, beauty of standards. So 
um, always trying to assimilate or um, aspire to like whiteness and making your name more accessible or white-like um, just to help them because they, I mean, the truth is they have the majority stake in all these businesses that we operate in. But I think it's, it tells something about you. You took what she said, you listened and you held your integrity and you was like, nope. I'm going to pronounce my name like Belhika, like it's supposed to be. Um, that's my name. So kudos to you for that. That was really good information. And like my head is already um, filling up with like so many ideas of how we could do this. So I think we should get started, right? So like I mentioned, monologues are kind of special because you don't have beginning, middle and end. But since this is like a workshop, we don't know who might be watching this. And this might be like your first time writing something. I think it would be best if we like follow that structure. So the beginning could be like... Um, introducing the characters, settings, a little backstory, and then really introduce um, that thing that catapults you into the middle where we'll like dissect that thing that we're talking about, um, give it all the nice little juicy details that we want. And then um, the ending is like, um, I like to think of the ending of a monologue um, as like, okay, so what was the resolution? okay, what did we learn? Okay, like, what's the statement? Because I think, like, when we watch monologues as an audience, and the reason why we love them so much is because, like, you have this character, like, saying this long speech, and at the end, you feel like you understand the character a little bit more. So with these monologues and the one that we're writing today, let's have, like, the ending be, like, that, hmm, moment. Like, I got the resolution. I know who she is now. I understand that. I think it might be fun, and you can let me know what you think, to start and end with me introducing myself in an audition setting. And then I, at the end, like the resolution can be, I'm still saying my name, the way my name was said to me when I was born. <laughs> Sometimes I don't write in like order. Logical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I wrote Belhika at the top and then I'll write Belhika at the bottom, just knowing like where I wanna start and where I wanna end. Do you know what it means? Yes, it is the country Belgium in Spanish. Um, so this is what I'm thinking so far. Belgica, which means Belgium. I, I know that. they have a lot of chocolate and waffles. And then what about Rajukas? Does it mean anything? Oh gosh, it means that the Spanish came to Mexico and... <laughs> <laughs> um, or it symbolizes your Hispanic heritage. I think like something that we can emphasize um, like names are so important because that's the only thing that's like really given to us. You know what I'm saying? Part we would transition into like the casting office if that's what we're going to do. And then I say, Belgica Rodriguez, pause, because this is usually what I do. I say, Belgica Rodriguez, Belgica, B-E-L-G-I-C-A, Belgica. Mm -hmm. And then I pause and then everybody's faces are always like, you know, unless they know Spanish. So I put that in there as well. Um, so after that, I'm like, how about we call you Bill Rodriguez? It's more accessible. Okay. So instead of how about we call you, you want to use, I'm going to call you Bill. Yeah, because it's not a question usually. It's just a statement. Oh, honey, they don't even ask you. Yeah. A lot of the wow. times it's a statement or it's, do you have something else? It's like, <laughs> And like constantly in my pra in my process, I like to like reread it all mm -hmm. the time just to see like where I'm going. So I'm just gonna read it out loud. Oh my gosh! And when I'm writing these things, just to like share with everyone, like my handwriting is atrocious. Okay, <laughs> like I know it sounds random, but uh, let me write it out and then I'll read. Yeah, I'm not the clothes I wear. I am not the degree I hold. Tell you, girl, it was coming together. <laughs> I am not. I know at first I was like the clothes, was like Cynthia, what? <laughs> like Cynthia, um, <laughs> we're coming from a little place here. But that's like, I mean, you write all this stuff down and you can go back and like make. Yeah, it yeah, up. yeah. No, but I, it makes so much sense. I love it. Okay. And then, hi, my name is Belgica Rodriguez. We can say it again if you like. Oh, I'm like, just saying, like that feels that feels like a good like ending. No. Like, hi, my name is Bobby. Or do you think there's still more to explore? Okay, girl, we did it. It's a little monologue, just so people. Now, I know this looks like a lot on paper, but I promise you when you type it out, it's like not that. Yeah. yeah.
So that took us about, I want to say like 50 minutes. 50? Yeah. So it's not impossible. Like, cause just, I'm just giving people perspective of like, if you have an experience and you want to sit down and write it out, um, this might not be like the absolute final draft of it. Like we might change a word or two, but it's doable to grab an experience that you have had once or a hundred million times and create it into a piece. Yeah. Um, so I will, I would have loved for you to read it, but I was doing the writing. Um, so I'll just read it for you guys right now. Um, and again, this is like a rough draft. You always go back and tweak words and like make it better and more concise. Belgica Rodriguez. Belgica, which means country of Belgium, whose waffles and chocolate is to die for. Rodriguez, which also signifies Spanish presence in Mexico. Belgica Rodriguez, also the name given to me by my parents. This is why when I became an actor, I decided that my name would be, hi, my name is Belgica Rodriguez, Belgica. B-E-L-G-I-C-A. I'm going to call you Belle Rodriguez. It's more accessible. Your name is just too hard. It's not easy for me to pronounce it. I'll forget it. <clears throat> hmm. This is a common exchange in these casting rooms, sometimes everywhere. Should I pronounce my name in a way that Others are comfortable? Would I be comfortable? As an actor, I tell the stories and embody the souls of others. I constantly step into someone else's life. So when I introduce myself, it's the only time I pronounce you. I am not the clothes I wear. I am not the degree I hold. I am not the roles I play. Those are things that I'm good at. Something I do, and they can be taken away, but not my name. Belgica Rodriguez. Hi, my name is Belgica Rodriguez. Belgica, B E L. G I C A. Oh my gosh, that is so much fun. Um, this gets me like extra excited because once in a while I'll meet somebody that has a name that gets similar reactions to mine. And they're so excited to finally meet somebody who has those experiences. If you choose to perform this monologue, anybody watching this, you can change the name, show what your name represents and you know, that you are proud of it and that you do want people to pronounce it that way. With that being said, also, if you really don't care that much about names, then it's okay. You know, like, it's just my experience. I care. As beautiful as your name is, this is completely interchangeable to like anybody else to use. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we're going to include it. Yes, in the monologue competition. So let me tell, let us tell you guys about this monologue competition. It is you performing a monologue. It's going to be one of the three monologues that we chose. So two of them are Cynthia's monologue that she previously wrote, which are uh, Triple Consciousness and Clog Drain, which are in her monologue book. And then the one that we wrote together today, um, we I don't think we've put a name for it, but it can just be my name, Belgica. With all of these monologues, if you need to exchange something, especially with mine with my name, if you need to exchange something to make it more personal to you, you can. So you will have to send us an unlisted link and everything will be in the description of uh, for the competition. And you also have to subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment and follow Cynthia on Instagram, as you see on the screen here. Everything about Cynthia will be linked in the description as well. All of the instructions, the monologues, all the information you need. And it is going to be due April 17th. And for the prizes, we are going to gift you either $100 worth of an acting class, which is... Um, the acting class is called Actors Play LA, um, based in Los Angeles, California. And fortunately, um, during the pandemic, they are doing Zoom classes. Uh, they're very affordable um, and act 
a studio ran by actors who are working professionals. Um, and it's a really, really great studio. So you can choose to take those acting classes, again, $100 worth, or you can choose to take a consultation with Jackie Dallas, which I've made videos with her before, so she can help you out and give you guidance of what you should do in your career, what next steps you should take. And that'll be also $100 worth of a consultation with Jackie. So you can choose one of the two depending on what you think is most beneficial for you. So apart from choosing one of those, we're also going to give you $100 so that you can use it for whatever you like if you need a tripod for your auditions or a new backdrop like I use a seamless paper one that is just, it always looks really nice and professional so you can choose to invest in your career if you want to I just want to announce that we are not affiliated with um, Jackie or Actors Play LA this is research that we've done by ourselves um, and um, of course from the personal relationship that we have with them um, and we decided that we wanted to come together and give this to you as actors especially during this crazy time um mm -hmm. just keep the dreaming and the hustling alive yeah yeah so we're we're not sponsored in any way by anybody it's just cynthia approached me and i really enjoyed her monologue so i decided that i would love to make some videos with her and then we come came up with a few ideas on how we could give back to people and also share these great monologues with other people. So if you guys are interested in purchasing her book, watching her film, um, getting in touch with her, you can, everything will be down in the description. And we are very excited to see all of the people that enter. Hopefully a lot of people enter. Please share this video with whoever you think might uh, benefit, but um, it's due April 17th. Thank you so much, Cynthia. It has been so much fun to work with you on this monologue and these two videos. And I'm excited for the next video where we talk about our experiences as actresses and also announce the winner of the competition. Thank you. It's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.